I'm going to be reading uh, Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. Uh, there were present at that season some that told him, that's told the Lord Jesus Christ of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. In other words, do you think really think this was from punishment? This was punishment upon them? I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. So we need to understand that this includes us. Except you repent, except I repent, except all of us repent, we shall all likewise perish. So we see repentance is absolutely necessary for salvation. Now, what is repentance? There's a lot of confusion about repentance, and I want to clear that up right now, hopefully. Now, repentance, as far as I can see from Scripture, is, in relation to salvation at least, is a change of mind. So what we do, we come to God and agree with him, yes, I realize that I am a sinner. God is the one that's right and I'm all wrong. I need to get right with God. I need to have forgiveness for my sins. And the only way is realizing, first of all, that we're sinners in the sight of the Lord. And as I said, repentance is absolutely essential to salvation. You see, it's repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Repentance is abs an absolute necessity to be saved, to get right with God, to have forgiveness for our sins. Because if we don't see our need, if we don't agree with God that we are sinners, which is repentance, that change of mind thing, we will never ever be saved. Because we won't see our need. We won't see that we're in desperate need of eternal redemption. That redemption that was purchased for us at the place called Calvary when the Lord Jesus Christ shed his precious blood upon the cross. It's all sufficient for all that will call upon the name of the Lord, as the scripture says, shall be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So it's repentance toward God, acknowledging my sinful condition before him, that change of mind, and then faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. As they said to the Philippian jailer, Paul and Silas, when they were in jail and they'd been released, um, and, you know, all the doors were opened and the, the jailer thought, oh, this is it, I've had it, I'm... They're going to kill me now. The authorities are going to kill me, so I may as well kill myself. And if you're thinking of um, committing suicide, don't do it. You know, the devil would love you to do that because that would seal your eternal doom if you're without Christ. If you die without Christ, in other words, if you commit suicide and you're not saved, you will be in hell. God does not want you to go down to hell, my friend. And this man, he said, Sirs, he came in and he said to Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? The answer was, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So it's repentance toward God, that change of mind, and then faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And then you'll receive everlasting life. You'll be, become a child of God. The Bible says, for you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Or those 18 upon whom the tower of Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you, nay, in other words, no, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Absolutely essential repentance is for salvation. Repentance coupled with faith. So it's repentance toward God, as I've said, and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. He spake also uh, this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. 
Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? In other words, this is taking out waste of space here. This um, fig tree is not bearing any fruit. Get rid of it. And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till it I shall dung, uh, dig about it and dung it. In other words, fertilize it. And if it bear fruit, well. And if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. So give it another opportunity. And you know, every time you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ preached, you have another opportunity. This is a golden opportunity for you, my friend, to be saved, to get right with God, to have forgiveness with your, uh, for your sins and peace with God. You know, the Bible says in Romans 5.1, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise or in no way lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. In other words, he was very angry, very mad, because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, um, There are six days in which men ought to work. In them, therefore, come and be healed and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, dost not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, in other words, she was a Jew by nationality, by birth, uh, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. And when he had said these things, all his adversaries were ashamed, and all the people rejoiced for all the glorious things that were done by him. Then said he, Unto what is the kingdom of God like? And whereunto shall I resemble it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and cast into his garden, and it grew and waxed a great tree, and the fowls of the air lodged in the branches of it. In other words, the birds of the air uh, came and, you know, perched in the branches of it. And again he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like leaven, that's our modern day yeast, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. You know, just imagine putting uh, yeast into flour and, you know, it, it uh, ferments and it, it, uh, it makes the, um, the flour rise. In other words, that's what you, how you make bread, basically. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. That's the narrow gate. In other words, agonize to enter in at the narrow gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once the master of the house is risen up and hath shut to the door, and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not, I know yet yeah, you not, whence ye are, or from where ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence, and thou hast taught in our streets. But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not, whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Imagine how terrifying that would be 
to have the Lord Jesus Christ say to you as an individual before the Lord, depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. That would, to me, would be very sad. After hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ preached, and I don't know how many times you've heard it, maybe you've heard it many times, maybe this is the first time. Praise the Lord, you're hearing it now. And may you come in repentance toward God, as I've said, acknowledge your sinful condition before the Lord, and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and then your soul will be saved. And you'll never, ever hear these words. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out. And they shall come from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. And behold, there are last which shall be first, and there are first which shall be last. The same day there came a certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, Get thee out uh, and depart hence. You know, go from here, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killeth the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed or happy is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Luke chapter 14, And it came to pass as he went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they watched him, and behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. And Jesus answering spake unto the uh, lawyers and Pharisees. Now the Pharisees, if you don't know, were a very self-righteous sort of a people. Uh, you know, we have the same sort of people on this earth now, and they've always been here. Uh, people who thought they were cut above other people. You know, God puts us all on the same level playing field. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's why we all need God's salvation, that eternal salvation that is only found in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they came, um, and Jesus answering, spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they held their peace, and he took him and healed him. That's uh, the man with the dropsy. He took him and he healed him and let him go. And answered them, saying, Which of you shall have an ass or an ox fallen into a pit and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him again to these things. And he put forth the parable to those which were bidden. In other words, those that were uh, invited. That's what that word means, bidden. When he marked uh, how they chose out the chief rooms, saying unto them, When thou art bidden, or when thou art uh, invited, of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room, lest a more honourable man than thou be bidden of him. And he that bade thee, or he that invited thee, and him come and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidden, when thou art invited, go and sit down in the lowest room, that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. 
Then shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. You see, we've got to become as a little child to be saved. Got to come in humility of mind, in humbleness of mind, realizing we cannot save ourselves by any way, shape or form. Any sort of good works will only take us down to hell. We've got to come through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work upon the cross that is all sufficient to save your soul. I wonder, is your soul saved? Are you a child of God? Have you come in repentance toward God, acknowledging your sinful condition before him and believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to receive that everlasting life that can be yours right now through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ? Then said he also to him that bade him, When thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, in other words, neither your relations, nor thy rich neighbours, lest they also bid thee again. In other words, otherwise they're going to invite thee again. And a recompense be made thee. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed. For they cannot re recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. You see, there is going to be a resurrection of the just and of the unjust. The just are those who are saved by the grace of God by putting their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the unjust are those who die without the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour. I wonder which category do you come in? Are you a just person or an unjust person? The only way we can be just is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. When we receive the righteousness of God through faith in Christ alone. And when one of them that sat at meat uh, with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade many. In other words, he invited many. And sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, those that were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. And this is what the Lord is saying unto you right now. Come, for all things are now ready. The way to heaven has been opened by the Lord Jesus Christ. And they all, with one consent, be, began to make excuse. I wonder, what is your excuse? Why are you not saved yet? The first said unto him, I've bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to pr uh, prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Why couldn't he bring his wife with him? So that servant came and showed his lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither, or bring in here the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto his, the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. This reminds me of open-air preaching, or street preaching. Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. You see, the Lord has a desire to fill his house with people, people who are saved by the grace of God through the finished work of his Son upon the cross. And you need to be one of those people. For I say unto you that none of those men which were bidden, in other words invited, shall taste of my supper. This speaks really of the original ones that were invited. It speaks of the nation of Israel, how they'd rejected the Messiah. They did not recognize him for who he really is. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man will come to me, let him hate his father. Oh, sorry. If any man will come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. What he's saying is, 
in comparison to the love that you have to your relations, you must love me a lot more. And it must be like hate to those of your loved ones. Although you still love them, but in, in uh, comparison, it's got to be more love for me. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest haply, after he um, hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. In other words, make fun of him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first and consulteth whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him that cometh against him with 20,000. In other words, have you counted the cost of being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions of peace. So in other words, he's surrendering his wanting to make peace before they come together to have to make war. Uh, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his savour, speaking about the, the it's actually a, um, a symbol of the Holy Spirit here, the Holy Spirit who comes to dwell within the body of the believer that once they're saved, um, Salt is good, but if the salt have lost his savour, wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land, nor yet for the dunghill, but men cast it out. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. I wonder if you are a believer, are you letting your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven? Don't hide your bushel. Don't hide the Lord Jesus Christ, as it were, the testimony that you are saved. Don't hide that fact. And don't hide the Lord Jesus Christ under a bed or under a bushel. You need to let it shine, shine ever so brightly, so more people will be attracted to our Lord Jesus Christ for your, their eternal salvation. So if you're a believer, get out there and tell people the message of salvation. They can be saved through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. As I originally said, repentance toward God, that's that change of mind, agreeing with God that we are sinners or that you are a sinner as an individual. It's an individual matter. And then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. This would be the best day of your entire life if today you would come to faith in Christ. Remember, Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures. Your soul can be saved through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Either heaven or hell, your eternal destiny depends on what you do with the Son of God. The Lord Jesus Christ will either be your Saviour or will have to be your judge. What will it be for you? If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.